The high standard Duramatic, let's check it out. High Standard Manufacturing was founded in 1926 and closed its doors in 2018. Uh, during that time, they produced a lot of different firearms, but they're mainly known for their 22 semi-automatic pistols. Some were very highly regarded as very accurate, reliable handguns, and many were used in NRA bullseye competitions all over the country. They're based on the Colt Woodsman design. Now today we're going to be taking a look at the Duramatic. This is the bottom of the list. It's more of a utility pistol, but it still has a lot of the same features that many of the target pistols had, which included the Supermatic, the Victor, the Olympia. I mean, there were a lot of different handguns that they produced. This is a simple 22 10 shot blowback action. Uh, it's very well made and it's just kind of old school, all steel frame. Really competed heavily with the Ruger Mark series, which was again a reasonable firearm, very similar to these high standard. And during World War II, the military ordered over 30,000 high standard pistols to be used for training. And they also served as a silenced pistol for the OSS. And so it does have a rich history, and it's just one of those iconic firearms that when I found it at my local gun shop, I couldn't pass it up. The High Standard Duramatic M101. These were manufactured from 1954 up until 1970. And High Standard again produced a lot of different type firearms. This is the basic 22 pistol for them. This again is kind of their low end pistol. But they did make a number of guns through Sears with J.C. Higgins and even J.C. Penney, from what I understand, under some different names. Those were probably even more basic than the Duramatic. It is a 10 round plus one in the magazine. Very unique features to it. And yet, it just has that really nice milled finish. And honestly, I, I feel like it's just a beautiful pistol. So the first thing we're going to do is safety check the pistol. The mag release is up here, which is really unusual. Uh, it's not something that you can grab with your right hand. You're going to have to use your left hand to get to it. Uh, but when we hit that release, it drops the magazine out. It just kind of flows out. It doesn't really eject, just kind of drops out. But the magazine is a 10 rail magazine. It's all steel. Uh, it is numbered and it does have a loading assist button on the side with a polymer or plastic uh, magazine follower. The original magazines are fairly difficult to get. I think Triple K makes some. Maybe there are some other aftermarkets. Uh, reliability is kind of hit or miss. But uh, this is a nice solid magazine. Check the chamber and the gun is empty. Uh, now this is a striker fired pistol um, and it is a blowback design. Uh, the grips are a Bakelite grip and it actually surrounds the entire area where the magazine goes in. So this is really a part of what would be a frame but and we're not going to necessarily take them off it does have a screw right here where you could pull these off but this grip really constitutes pretty much what is your lower frame nice big trigger guard right here we have our safety and it's on safe here when we push it out it's on fire uh, but this also serves as a slide stop uh, it doesn't hold open on the last round so when you pull this all the way back there's another notch and when you put it into the safe position it'll lock the slide back um, and then all we have to do is to hit the safety and it'll drive the slide home 
So if you load your magazine and have it open like that, you can actually go ahead and insert a, a round to the chamber. Uh, here the barrel, uh, just a really nice, beautifully blued barrel, very well finished. I mean, the gun looks really nice, especially to be the bottom of the line. Uh, a lot of the firearms that they produced were target pistols, extremely accurate. Uh, the Supermatic, the Field King, the Olympic, the Victor. I mean, there's a number of different ones. And I've actually seen some videos where guys had whole collections of these. I mean, they are very collectible. Uh, this one is not really super expensive. I found this at a local gun shop where I get all my guns transferred, and this one came in. I had been kind of looking at these for a while. Again, they are based on the Colt Woodsman. Uh, so it's kind of got that really nice look, and yet, you know, it's just different. And I like different. Uh, they also had conversion kits to 22 short available for these pistols. Now, there's not a whole lot of information about the Duramatic, I guess because there were so many different models and so many different iterations. But this is still a very fascinating pistol. One of the things that's really unique, you'll see this knob at the bottom, and this is your takedown knob, and you actually turn this, and we're going to look at it when we disassemble it, to take the barrel right off. Now, I believe that the Duramatic was the only one that had this kind of system. The others just had a push button, so you could push the button and lift the barrel off. So I thought that was pretty unique. The serrations are angled back, so it's really easy to grab that slide, and again, no round bolt hole open. Uh, you have an extractor here on the outside. Now you notice this little red dot. We're going to drop in a little snap cap because I'm going to pull the trigger. And especially on these older firearms, guys, you don't want to dry fire a 22 rim fire or any rim fire. So as we pull the trigger, it just disappears. And so that lets you know that the striker is not cocked. We bring it back. Now it's cocked. The rear sight is a notch sight and it is dovetailed in and then here at the front we just have a blade. Uh, this little part I added a little bit of paint to the end because it just really helps to see those sights. But even so, I mean it's a really nice sight picture even in the black. The bluing is really nice even though this one is not in excellent condition, it's in really good condition. Um, and you know the uh, kind of a matte more matte finish on the top and then the high polish on the bottom I mean you can see the workmanship it's been done very well the frame also has that kind of a matte finish to it so it gives it a little bit of a contrast the trigger is just curved we'll check out the trigger pull in just a second but pretty much you know just a basic little 22 pistol this all steel so it does have a little bit of weight to it now this comes in a four and a half inch barrel but it also came in a six point 7.5 inch barrel. In fact, the 6.5 barrels had little slots that acted as a muzzle brake. And of course, on the more expensive models, the sights were adjustable. I mean, there was a lot of different features, even more of a straight grip angle. In fact, some of the ones that were bought through the U.S. military had the 1911 grip angle. This one has a similar angle to that, but then that back part kind of comes off like a giant beaver tail. <laughs> But man, I'm telling you, you put this in your hand, if you're ever at a gun shop and you see one, I just recommend grabbing it because it's got that old school design, but yet it feels really nice. Sometimes some of the older modeled pistols uh, tend to be kind of awkward. And to me, this has a very graceful look to it. Um, even though it definitely shows that it has that styling of you know the 50s or even before that. But overall, I mean, it's just a very elegant, graceful pistol. For a more civilized age, I guess. <laughs> it's approximately nine inches in overall length and it's about five inches from the grip all the way to the top. And honestly, it's really thin. The grips do come out just a little bit. Weight on the Duramatic two pounds or 32 ounces. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Three pounds. And actually, I've tested this about five times, and it comes out around the three-pound range. Now, High Standard Manufacturing Corporation, Hamden, Connecticut. Uh, later on, it was bought and moved to Texas, but that was many years later. And then, of course, your serial number and the M-101 model. Here on the other side, High Standard, and then Duramatic. Uh, some models have the Duramatic here, and I believe that was some later models, or possibly earlier models, and with the High Standard here. 
We appreciate Fioki for sponsoring the ammo. Uh, we're using some copper washed jacketed bullets. Uh, these are high velocity, but we're also using some standard velocity lead round nose. And Fioki's made right here in the USA. And I'll tell you guys, this has really been my first experience with the 22 Fioki, and it's excellent. Very much like the CCI mini mags. Unfortunately, I only have one magazine, so we'll have to deal with it. Now, I was pretty excited about getting this down to the range and just seeing how it functioned. Uh, they're known to be very reliable, so you know I didn't expect too much uh, other than just a lot of fun shooting. Uh, that grip is so natural. It just goes so deep into your hand. And so it makes it very balanced and very pointable. It almost is like a, an extension of your hand, the way it fits. It's just a really soft shooting gun. 22 is a lot of fun anyway to take to the range. Low report, low recoil. It's great for training kids. And yet, you know, it's great to get that accuracy without breaking the bank. Now, when it comes to reliability, we did have some issues with it. Um, it did malfunction a number of times. Uh, and so, you know, that was just part of it. One of the problems was when I bought it, I didn't even clean it. I just kind of looked down the barrel to make sure there were no obstructions and just shot it. I think once we take it out and clean it up, I think it'll be more reliable because again, these are known uh, to be reliable firearms. But one thing we did try were some standard velocity uh, 22s from Fiocchi. Uh, they just didn't seem to function that well. In fact, we couldn't get it to actually insert a round and eject the brass. Using higher velocity ammunition is definitely going to be necessary for these pistols. Uh, the 10 round magazine, I, you know, that magazine releases in a really awkward position uh, and it does shoot the magazine out. And it, that would be okay if you had an extra magazine, but you know, these are, the magazines again are very difficult to come by and that's one of the issues with this pistol. Uh, there are some aftermarket magazines, but from what I understand, they're not that reliable. But overall, the balance, the feel of the firearm, it just felt great, and I really enjoyed it. It's, there's something about taking a vintage firearm out to the range that shoots modern calibers. Because you could have any 22 in your hand, and it would be the same experience. But yet, you know that this has been around for a long time, and it probably has a lot of stories to tell. As far as the sights go for fixed sights, they're very visible, easy to see. Uh, the notch in the back allows for enough light to come in between the front sight. It was easy, but it really would have been nice to have some adjustable sights like a lot of the target models. But for just what it is, a utilitarian 22 pistol, uh, the sights are really nice. Now for disassembly, let's go ahead and drop our magazine, check the chamber, it's empty. Again, there's this dial at the bottom, this button. There are actually three slots. I don't know if there was a certain tool that was used to break this down. Uh, this one was kind of stiff when I got it, and so you just want to turn it. Uh, I actually loosened this. I put the blade of a screwdriver in here and just pulled it a little bit, and then it began to turn. So you just want to turn this and actually you want to go ahead and pull back that slide and I should have done that ahead of time. It kind of binds the, the little nut here. And so we're going to go ahead and just turn this. You can see that the barrel is starting to come loose. We have little threads at the end of the barrel and this is retained inside the frame which I like. Now we're going to go ahead and disable our safety and pull the slide right off. There is some spring tension, so be careful. Let's go ahead and pull the slide off first. Then we have our recoil spring. Now you have your striker or your firing pin right here, and it's under spring tension. And just like your modern striker fire pistols, you've got to pull the trigger to disable the striker. But this is under spring tension, so you've got to be really careful. So we're going to, and if you pull this, make sure it's on fire. There we go, it releases. Again, guys, be careful, this can shoot across the room. And then we have our spring. Uh, this is the orientation that you want to insert it back, is the flat side. But here it is, uh, just a little bit more detail. There's a little groove right here, and that's probably what holds it into place. And then you can see the red dot here that we're seeing out the back side of the slide. 
One thing I want you to note is that little dent right there at the top of the chamber, that is from dry firing it without a round in the chamber. Unfortunately, after firing those 10 rounds out of your magazine, sometimes you just pull that trigger and that can cause that. In fact, on the firing pin, you can see that it's worn just a little bit. And one thing I do want to show is the buildup inside this gun. Um, it probably caused some of the malfunctions just because this gun has not really been cleaned in a good while. And so I'm going to clean this up and then we'll reassemble it. Yeah, even here in the top of the slide, I mean, there is a lot of debris in there, much more than we shot. Even though we did shoot quite a few rounds, I shot about 500 rounds through this thing. But uh, it, I think this has been over years. And so it needs to be cleaned. And it's one of the things about 22 is you need to keep it clean for it to really function correctly. I mean, here at the barrel, you can see the buildup. I mean, it's considerable. Now to reassemble the Duramatic. Uh, first, we're going to take our striker and our recoil spring. You want that flat side to be down against the frame. Now the spring does not go into this channel. It just rests. So you want to hold it and then take the striker and push it all the way through. And once you get it in, you're going to want to keep pushing it back until you hear a click. Just like that. That is caught on the trigger. And so it should be in place. Don't pull the trigger. In fact, go ahead and put it on safe. Now take your recoil spring and your slide, and right here in this channel, just put your recoil spring over it. And then you want to get the slide rails, and it's a little tricky, there we go, and it, you want to go over your striker spring system. And you'll need to disengage your safety. Now bring this all the way back and put it in the slide lock position, just like that. Now take your barrel, and we're going to reinsert the barrel. We're going to tighten down on this screw. You want to make sure you get this pretty tight. <laughs> you don't want the barrel loose. And once you get it good and hand tight, you could actually tighten that up with a screwdriver blade and just kind of pull it, but don't do what whoever owned this before. Looks like they marred it up just a little bit. And then we're going to release our safety. And we're back in business. Guys, that is not difficult to do at all. And sometimes these old firearms like this, it can have a very complicated breakdown. But honestly, to me, this was really easy. Well guys, typically you can find these on Gun Broker for around the $400 range. I saw a number of them, and then of course the higher tier models are going to be more expensive and honestly a little more collectible. But to me, for an entry level little 22, this is a great little option. Uh, now that we've cleaned it, I'm really excited to get it back out to the range and see if there's any improvement. Uh, but you know, it just is a pain when you have a gun that isn't just functioning just one or two here and there but uh, we had a few extras there were a lot of these made so there should be some parts out there but again magazines are going to be a real difficult thing to get a hold of as far as parts go a lot of times you can actually find them on ebay but gun broker is a great resource for finding a lot of different parts and accessories i like the bakelite grips uh, they're just really comfortable the grip itself man it just fits into your hand um, a little weird on the magazine release for sure, and the safety is a little different, but uh, it works fine. And of course, the takedown method, honestly, is really simple. Once you get this screw loose, um, you know, you can get right to it. Uh, the sights are pretty decent. Um, you know, it, this is not, again, a target pistol as such. It's really a plinker, but not bad fixed sights. And again, if you want something a little bit more upgraded a little bit more toward the target category uh, high standard made a lot of different models for that so this is just one of those pistols that's very beautiful uh, nice piece of history and guys it's just a lot of fun to take to the range and 22 is always one of my favorite calibers at the range guys there's always a lot of different type handguns that are out there and many of them have a very rich history just like this high standard duramatic uh, and it's really nice to see that old school quality and just the manufacturing processes that go around it. But then again, it's just great to take to the range. It's still a 22 long rifle. And whether you have a brand new modern 22 from today's standards or something like this Duramatic, you know, it's a lot of fun just to take to the range and to shoot. Guys, check out Sportsman's Guide for 
all kind of accessories, shooting, hunting, camping, military surplus from all over the world. Uh, it's one of my go-to sources. And you get $20 off for every $100 or more purchase using SOOCH, S-O-O-T-C-H, in the coupon code. And if you're a member of their Buyers Club, you get free shipping. And that really comes in handy when you're ordering jerry cans. <laughs> so check out Sportsman's Guide. Great resource. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. The serrations are curved back. The high standard. Uh, but I feel like that that front sight may be off just a. Uh. It's called a Duramatic because this thing is built like a tank. <laughs>